In this video, I'm going to be telling you about some first team mistakes that all the new players make. So if you're in the first team, make sure you do not make these mistakes. And the very first mistake I got on this list is not abusing server hop. Server hopping is a very easy method that's going to help you gain a lot of XP extremely fast. Once you finish killing a boss or whatever you want to server hop, you simply have to click the icon right here that says servers and join a new server. Make sure you choose a server that's not full or else you're going to have to retry this a bunch of times. But it should take a maximum of literally one minute. And speaking of servers, the next mistake that a lot of people make is not abusing using free private servers. In Blossfoots, you have to pay a certain amount of Robux to get a private server. But there's actually a way to get private servers completely for free. Head over into Roblox, and then you have to click on servers right before you join Blossfoots. You have to change the filter system to ascending. It's going to show you the servers with the least amount of people, and usually there's only one person in the server, and 99% of the time is usually AFK. So once you join the server, you're going to have a completely free server all to yourself, and you can literally even invite your friends. Just make sure you don't invite too many people, because then a bunch of randoms are going to start joining the server, because I guess that's how the Blossfoot code works. The next mistake I see a lot of people making is always following the quest guy. What I mean by the quest guy is the recommended quest that the compass gives you and I'm telling you that this is not a very good idea because that's not the most efficient way to gain XP. Let me give you an example real quick. Look at the pirate village that's on the first sea. If you take a look at the pirates over here they're very close to the quest giver like literally like two meters away from them and there's a total of four of them that spawn in this location which means they're very easy to group up if you have guns. Next up let's take a look at the brutes. Look how far away they spawn from the quest giver and look how far they're separated from each other. Even if you reach the level recommendation for them, I recommend still doing the pirates quest just because of how easy they are to group up and kill. And also not to mention that the brutes are way stronger than the pirates, so the pirates are incredibly easy to defeat while the brutes are kind of difficult, especially if you're a lower level player. Moving on to the next mistake, I see a lot of people doing this wrong, and that is leveling up your hockey the wrong way. Everyone knows the default way to level up hockey, and this is the mistake that everybody makes. You kinda just go around with your hockey turn on and you hit your enemies, but there's a way to do it literally overnight. But for this, you need an elemental fruit. Once you're equipped an elemental fruit, you need to get a sword that's the lowest level possible. And most of you already have the katana or the cutlass, so I recommend going back to the first island and getting the opposite sword that you bought. So if you bought a katana, I recommend getting a cutlass, and if you bought a cutlass, I recommend getting a katana. And the reason you want to do this is because the lower the level of your weapon, the way easier this trick is going to be. Head over to the spawn point of any enemy in the game that does not have hockey. So obviously you can't do bosses, and you can't do these guys at Fountain City. You have to be a higher level than the enemy you want to do this with. Make sure you're standing exactly on your spawn point and leave an auto clicker on and obviously turn on your hockey and the way you level up your hockey actually depends on how many times you hit your enemy not how much damage you do to them so by taking advantage of this and if you leave your auto clicker on overnight you should literally wake up to max hockey this is really really overpowered so make sure you take advantage of this the next thing i see a lot of people doing is grinding the wrong way and this is kind of situational because it actually depends heavily on whether you have friends that play the game if you don't have any friends then this trick isn't really for you but if you do make sure you get them online and usually if you're in the first your friend should be a higher level than you so get them to help you out while fighting NPCs. Ask your friend to get an NPC down to around 90% of their health, and if you do the rest of the 10% of damage, then that literally counts as a kill. Just make sure it's nothing under 10% because then it won't count as a kill. I made this mistake with bosses. I used to get my friends to help me out, and they would leave the boss one hit. But that does not work. They need to have at least 10% of their health remaining. So make sure you get that part right. It's incredibly important. The next thing I see a lot of people using wrong is the Portal Fruits X ability. There's actually two different ways to use it. The first way is the traditional way, it's literally just using the X ability, blip into another dimension, and come back where you want. But did you know that if you stand incredibly still and actually use the Portal Fruits X ability and you don't move at all, then there's actually a glitch in the game which makes it so you're completely invisible for the whole time. Even after your ability ends, no one will be able to see you. I guess this is a good way to escape a fight, but I'm pretty sure they can still hit you. You're just invisible, so make sure you use it in the correct spot. The next mistake I see a lot of people making is choosing the wrong fighting style in the first seat. Everyone knows that there's three main fighting styles, Dark Step, Electric, and Water Kung Fu. The Dark Step fighting style is an incredibly cheap fighting style. It's literally the first fighting style that you can buy. It costs a total of 150,000 belly and has a total of four different abilities with a transformation. And since it's the cheapest, it's not really a good fighting style, so you don't really want to be getting your hands on this. Its abilities are more suited towards pvp than actually grinding so there's no real point if you're looking to level up but if you're looking to pvp then i guess you can get your hands on this moving on to the next fighting style it's the electric fighting style this costs a total of 500,000 belly and this fighting style has three different abilities and just like the dark step fighting style this is also suited more towards pvp it's not really something you want to be using for leveling up the final fighting style that's in the first seat is water kung fu and this is definitely the fighting style that you want to get your hands on i know it's the most expensive and you're gonna have to do a bit of saving for it but i definitely recommend getting it just because of how overpowered it is for grinding this is the only fighting style in the game 
that does not have a delay between its M1 attacks, and that's something you really want to take advantage of when you're grinding. Which brings me to my next point. Once you get Water Kung Fu, you can actually upgrade it to Sharkman Karate later on, which is the strongest fighting style in the game for grinding. So you literally have no reason to not get this fighting style. Another huge mistake I see people making is for people that have bought permanent fruits with Robux, and I'm actually one of these people, and I was making this mistake for like a whole year while playing this game. When you have a fruit permanently equipped, then you actually don't need to go over to the box fruit dealer to equip it. You can literally equip it any time, no matter where you are, by accessing the shop directly. So I'm not really sure why I kept going to the box fruit dealer, and it made me take way more time to record my videos, because I could just keep going back and forth every time I wanted to equip the new fruit. Thank god I know this now so I can make videos faster for you guys. The next mistake that people make is not abusing the flash step ability. You literally buy it from the Rayleigh NPC who's located in this cave on the ice village. And there's actually two ways to abuse flash step. The first way is literally just for movement. I'm pretty sure 99% of players use it for this. The second way actually lets you glitch through things. Like glitch out of buildings that have very weird exits. It might be a bit hard to learn with the angles at first, but once you get good at it, you can literally just spam the crap out of it. And if you want to use flash step even better, make sure you equip the human race because it reduces the cooldown. The next mistake I see people making is eating mythical fruits. The rarities for fruits in this game do not matter. Trust me on this one, guys. Let me give you an example of a rare fruit that's actually better than a mythical fruit. First, the mythical fruit I'm talking about is the control fruit. It's literally the one Law uses. You just spawn in a big bubble, and you're basically just god mode inside that bubble. You can levitate stuff, throw it at your enemies. You can use the echo knife, which literally just spams the crap out of them, and they can't even dodge it. You can also use the gamma rush ability, where you hit them with like a 10x combo. Incredibly crazy, and you can also basically just teleport inside it. But there's actually a fruit that's way better than this fruit. Even though the control fruit is literally one of the coolest fruits in the game, and in my opinion, it's probably the coolest fruit because i mean just look at it the concept is just amazing the fruit that i'm talking about that's better is a rare fruit it's literally the light fruit and it only costs 650,000 belly and it's way easier to be in stock at the blocks fruit dealer it's actually an elemental fruit it has an awakening which you can unlock for 14,500 fragments it also has a passive ability you basically get a sword with this fruit. literally look at how overpowered that is and the abilities in general are just better because you don't need to spawn in a whole bubble to use them and if you're looking to level up the light fruit is definitely better because it's one of the best grinding fruits in the whole whole game. The light fruit also has the fastest movement ability in the whole game. Control fruit can't even compete. For leveling up, the control fruit might honestly be one of the worst fruits you can oh use. No. Anyways, moving on, the next mistake I see people make is leveling up their Buddha fruit. And what I mean by this is not leveling up with the Buddha fruit, it's leveling up the Buddha fruit itself. You literally have no reason to do this because the only reason you want to be using the Buddha fruit is for its increased range. So, if you're using the Buddha fruit and its abilities like normal and trying to level it up, trust me, you do not want to be doing that. Its abilities are completely useless. Just stop. Uh, Please, use the butter fruit normally. Okay. Anyways, moving on, the next mistake I see people making is doing high-level bosses early just for boss drops. And I know it might be cool to get some boss drops, like maybe getting the glasses from the cyborg boss in the first C is cool and all, but keep in mind, he's the strongest boss in the whole of the first C, so if you're like a level 10 player, you do not want to be fighting this boss. But if you're really confident in yourself and you have a high-level food or a really overpowered fighting style, then I guess you can try the challenge, but don't challenge yourself too hard because you're gonna die. The next thing that you don't want to be doing is storing your fruits. There's actually reasons that this is a good thing and a bad thing. If you just pick up a fruit and instantly store it, and it's a fruit that you already have or a fruit that you wanted to give to your friend, it's not a very smart thing because you can't really unstore your fruit. The only way you can give it to your friend then is by trading it. Then your friend has to trade another fruit that's worth similar value. But storing fruits can be a good thing if you do with fruits that you actually need or plan on using later. Or fruits that you obviously want to trade. That's pretty much it.